I have selected a handful of baits that we've filmed and fished with throughout the 2020 season. And I have a handful of them laid out here on a timeline. And I'm just gonna walk through what we've learned about each bait, why we like them. Through trial and error of fishing and filming with them, we can come back and we can review this footage and you can learn a tremendous amount about these lures, not only by fishing with them, but by reviewing the footage, listening to them, slowing the footage down. We, a lot of this stuff we'll shoot at like 120 frames a second, so we get to slow this footage down and really look at them and analyze each and every bait. I have about seven different baits on my timeline right now. These are just, a, like I said, a handful of the baits that uh, the Wired to Fish staff has come up with uh, that have just for whatever reason stuck out to us and um, I'm just gonna run through each one of them and hope you guys enjoy it and maybe learn something from it. Okay so the first one I happen to have queued up on my timeline is the Jabberjaw. Now this bait we have had success with this bait fishing. Face full of jabber um, it's a square bill I happen to have one right here in my hand but it does have an articulating square bill on the front of it right here. And you can see with my finger it goes back and forth. Consequently, it also gives it an interesting sound. You might call this a, an aggressive square bill. A square bill that throws off a lot of flash, a lot of roll, but then it also has that hard single knocking sound to it. It's very apparent in the underwaters as well as you can see here. And it has the great characteristics of deflection. You know, you run it over sticks and wood and logs and rock, and it kicks off of everything really, really nicely. Uh, Wheeler has thrown this bait a lot, and, and everybody kind of says it, it right re resembles the sound right of, a, of a hard hitting bladed jig. So that's kind of an interesting characteristic to, you know, it's a little different twist on a square bill. It comes equipped with a hybrid treble, which I think is interesting. I think it helps in the fact that the lure is less snaggy. You're not gonna snag this lure as much. You also protect the points of your hooks. Because this bait is getting thrown into cover, you know, that's kind of the objective to me, for me anyways, fishing a square bill. I like to bounce it off of things. I like to bounce it off a of rock, wood, any of that. So anytime I can keep a bait with sharp hooks, that's obviously a, a, a benefit. But the, the, the slight turn in with these hooks keeps those hooks really nice and sharp, keeps you from hanging the bait as much as well, along with that square bill. So that's number one on the list. Number two on the list is a hardcore shad. This is a versatile shad, and this was an interesting bait. It's kind of a hybrid between a crankbait, jerkbait. I personally have had some success with this lure, throwing this for bass. Uh, I did a little video this fall, throwing this around rock and targeting some deeper largemouth. Um, the one reason I like this is it's just something a little bit different. It has a nice roll to it. It gets down deep as well. That was the other thing that we really liked about this bait is it dove down very deep and the profile of it. It's not like your standard jerk bait where it has three hooks, long body, slender, kind of a smelt type look to it. This is more of like a shad body. Uh, or maybe a, you know, a bluegill or something. It just has that taller back. It's a two hooker, but it has a nice action to it. This, this I can see being a, a very good uh, multi-species bait for a guy that maybe likes trolling walleye as well. This is gonna be a very good walleye bait. You can slow this footage down and you can really look at the way that body kicks and it has a real hard flash to it. And it's just something a little bit different. It's not like your traditional crankbait or jerkbait. It's kind of a hybrid in the middle. Some of these baits are new. Some of these baits are not. Some of them are new to us. Some of them uh, may be old news to you. I'm just saying these are baits that stuck out to us 
as far as you know the ability to catch fish and the ability to catch your eye really um, so I think some of them kind of go hand in hand but the next one up here is this happens to be a newer bait this is the OG slim this is a rapala bait and this has been a a fish catcher. An OG slam. This is a new, new bait. bait right there. Ot Defoe came out with this. It's made out of balsa. Uh, again, it has the hybrid treble on it. But this has some nice characteristics. You can see that little crawfish scooting right by there in the rocks along with that bait. That's the other thing is this bait has flat sides. It's a balsa crankbait. With flat sides and it, and it does lift um, it has a nice little lift so if you do get if you do get stop you can throw slack to the bait and that bait will slowly rise up and, and you can crawl yourself right out of it kind of has a little bit of a not quite the characteristics of a square bill but it does really well in rock Odd Defoe's had some major success with this bait it's just one of them that stood out to us and uh, it's gonna be one you'll notice in the future for sure. We'll go right into number four. This is a bladed jig. This is the Thunder Cricket. This is a relatively new bait. Has good components is the first and foremost thing we noticed about it. There's a good owner hook in it. Skips pretty well. It just has, it's just a good, as far as a good quality bladed jig and getting nice good components it's a good at a good price too it's not it's not a crazy expensive um bladed jig so this is an other one that stood out to us that we really really liked fishing this particular bladed jig has a good selection of colors as well um, along with a lot of baits in the strike king lineup honestly uh, they are good colors that's the one important thing to us is colors always. Um, the next in the lineup here is a jerk bait. And this particular jerk bait stood out to us not only for its action, but for its size. The action first and foremost is really nice, it has a nice darting action. It is a two hook jerk bait, but you can see why. It is very petite. Now, this is gonna be a good bait for like your spinning rod applications, um, smallmouth, finicky largemouth potentially, but it also has a pretty good sized bill on it. This bait will get down to a reasonable depth. You know, on a long cast with light spinning equipment, you're probably gonna push about six feet of depth with this bait. This is a little whippersnapper 80. Now it has a bigger brother as well, but I really like the small one. The small one just really stood out to us. As you can see, you know, everybody's pretty familiar with a Vision 110, three hook jerk bait. Now you look at the size. Yeah, you're gonna cast this one a little further only because of sheer size, but this bait will fire a long way on spinning gear. So it's a fun bait to fish, you know? If you happen to be on like a big school of, of crappies on a brush pile, crappies love eating a jerk bait. They'll smoke this thing. So I, I, have, a, I have a good hunch about this. I, I fish it a little bit, caught a few smallmouth with it, but uh, this thing is gonna be a pretty darn cool bait somewhere down the line. It's not probably gonna be my go-to jerk bait, but there's just times when fish just want a smaller bait and this kind of fills the void in that jerk bait niche where you do get good action is the it's the that's the biggest thing this thing has really good action but it comes in just a small package so don't expect to go out and throw this on 10 or 12 pound fluoro on your bait casting setup it's just not really going to happen all right just bite that bullet throw it on a light braid i've been using a lot of that 131 lately that's six pound to eight pound braid with a light fluoro leader and you know you get at least a seven foot to seven six foot rod and you're gonna sail that bait a long way 
and it's gonna catch fish. It already has for me, so. On to the next. Now this is a very interesting bait. This is a Savage Gear bait. This is a line through spoon or sickle blade. This is a very interesting design and, and we've had success with this bait. The line through being the, the biggest thing, first and foremost, the way that line goes directly through the whole entire body of the bait, you can see how that treble hook separates from the blade. Now, if you didn't prefer that, you can add like a bobber stop or a, or a, a rubber, you know, what you would use to peg your Texas rigs or your punching baits. You can put that on there and keep that hook and that blade together. Is not only is it good for vertically jigging right under the boat to cast the bait out and actually retrieve it and twitch it back, it looks really, really cool. But the other thing that I paired it up with was a, a, a bladed treble. This is the hybrid treble. You can see it has a little blade on there and it's very apparent in the underwaters. Especially like if you're just casting it and winding it with that straight retrieve like that. It's not just a bare hook sitting at the end of the blade. There's a little bit of flash, a little kind of a little kicker blade on that back end of that treble hook. And this has been a cool bait for bass, for walleye. Uh, this fall I got on a bite where it was really good for big white fish. As we all know, spoons are just a good bait to catch fish. The list goes on, saltwater. Spoons are so successful in saltwater. So this was one that really stood out to us. Um, when you do hook a fish, fish will the fish will lose pretty much all leverage from the bait. That bait will separate, leaving you just a hook in their face. So that was, that was a big deal, because once you hook a fish on a traditional spoon, or, or any bait for that matter that has leverage where you hook a fish and they start twisting and turning there's a good chance you know that you they can gain garner leverage and pop that hook out of their mouth well with this particular lure that is not the case once you get them hooked with this generally they stay they're they're coming into the boat so that was one of the cool things we really liked about this bait and then last but not least, we have to throw in some kind of a soft plastic. And this one particularly stood out to us. Mitch Anderson caught a few fish this giant. summer on this bait. This is the uh, Berkeley Shaky Snake. Now, I think there's a Magnum and just a, a regular, but I think this was the Berkeley Magnum Shaky Snake. The first thing I noticed with this bait that I really liked, and this one, as you can see, has happened to be rigged Nico style, Neko, Nico, however you'd like. The one thing that I noticed right away is that if you look at it, on the fall, it falls perfectly straight. And then it stands up perfectly straight. I've done a lot of underwaters with baits that are Nico rigged, Neko rigged, that will fall with a kink in them and they don't fall perfectly straight up and down but this bait looks really really good underwater it has segmented tail and you can see when that when that footage is slowed down how that tail just quivers and it's a very very good candidate for a nico rig i could also see this bait being very good threaded on like a, a shaky head or um anything of that nature. But this bait was one of our favorite soft plastics this year. And we go through this stuff with a fine tooth comb and really look and, and see how these lures act and, and how fish respond to them. And, and you learn so much even by just fishing with them, but let alone filming underwaters of these baits. You really get to study and analyze each one of these lures and kind of get to look at them from a fish's perspective. And, and you know, that also translates to putting fish in your hands. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. It's something a little bit different, but uh, anyways, I'm gonna finish this up and, and get this published, so.